Hello, everybody. I am Rachel Samuels. I'm the Senior Manager of Social Media at Sprout Social. And I am joined here today by Alexa Heinrich, pronouns she and her, and Austin Braun, uh, pronouns he, him. And um, these two, I'm honestly starstruck to meet today because they're both part of our Sprout community. I know them actually way better by their handles, hashtag hey Alexa, Austin on social, um, but that's social media for you. Um, and we have them here because they run this awesome uh, social media account called Social Media Tea. Um, so I'll actually just let you both introduce yourselves real quick and then we can just roll in. I have a bunch of questions to ask you today since we're all very meta in the social media world. Um, and I feel like we've got a lot to talk about. So Alex, I'll sling it over to you. Cool. Thanks for having us here today. First off, it's great to see you, Rachel. Um, I'm Alexa. Feel free to call me Alex so your Amazon devices don't go off. Um, I am the social media manager for St. Petersburg College in sunny Florida, but I'm originally from Chicago, which is where Austin is now. That's right. And uh, hello, everyone. My name is Austin Braun. I just moved from Boulder, Colorado to Chicago, uh, and I'm soft transitioning on my role as digital media strategist at the University of Colorado Boulder College of Engineering. Uh, to pursue my startup, which is based out of here in Chicago. Uh, and I've just moved here and I'm excited to be here. Oh my gosh, so excited. I didn't show where I am, but I'm coming to you from Haverhill, Massachusetts. Uh, so we're my life. So, okay. Austin and Alexa, I've got a lot of questions, but let's start with how did the two of you meet and what is social media tea? Um, and, and, you know, really what inspired you to create it? So in true pandemic form, Austin and I have never met in person. We know each other through the higher education social media community, which is vast online. So we would kind of known each other through there. And I started social media tea by myself last June. And then Austin went and tried to spoil my fun. If you want to tell her about that. Oh man. Yeah. So I was uh, seeing the social media T account pop up here and there. It was gaining some traction and something just clicked. I don't know if it was intuition or just luck or a bit of both. And I was like, I know that tone and voice from Alexa's social media. Uh, that's her. And back then it was of course still anonymous. So I slid into those DMs and I was like, okay, Alexa, is this you? You have to tell me. And lo and behold, what was it? A week after it had begun, Seven like days. Just, I lasted seven days as anonymous. anonymous. <laughs> yeah, I was like, there's no way it's not her because she speaks in that uh, specific tone that we've all come to like analyze in our role in social media. We can pick up nuances here and there. Wow. And I was like, bingo, that's Alexa right there. That is so funny. Well, I'll be honest. I noticed the account as soon as it popped up, um, being a social media manager who markets to other social media managers all the time as Sprout Social is a social media management tool. I follow a lot of social media community, social media marketing, Twitter, Facebook, all of it. And I was seeing this account everywhere. And I too had a hunch that it was Alexa. Um, so when the account, you know, revealed, I was, I was actually really like just proud of myself that I was like, oh man, I know my community so well. Like I had a total selfish, proud of myself moment. So. It's funny because Alicia also suspected it was me and I told her because she and I are good friends. Well, for anyone who doesn't know, Alicia Johnson is our um, director of content. So it makes sense that she's also in that community. So I guess I will say the account has blown up. Um, I know you two have been working on it and changing things. You've learned a lot along the way. So as the account has grown so much, I mean, I still see it all, all the time. Um, what have you learned with that rapid growth? What have you learned about the community? Um, what has that rapid growth been like for the both of you? It was uh, staggering in the beginning, just because the higher education community found the T account and it started to gain traction as people were sharing it to that large community. And I was like, oh gosh, they're going to figure out it's me. <laughs> and then um, Matt Navarra found it and shared it to his thousands of followers. And there was a day I had to turn off my notifications because my phone was overheating from how many 
people we gained in a single day. And I'm pretty sure Austin was the one who went in and like actually turned off the notifications because they were just nonstop. I would, I would open my phone and it was just all Instagram notifications. But I think just like learning how to balance that project with what we do for our nine to five job has been a real learning curve and balancing all the communities that are involved with social media tea. Cause it's not just social media people. There's digital marketers from every spectrum. Yeah. yeah. Echoing all that she said. I mean, the bigger question is what haven't we learned? You know, we've learned the workflow. We learned what things work and what does, what don't in the beginning. But then we also really learned or at least for me personally, I realized that the community at large is so passionate about the work that they do online and the try the impact that they're always trying to push and achieve for. And that's been an overwhelmingly positive experience to just see that in action and know that there are other people out there who care and want to do good and connect with others in their community. Yeah, definitely. And also, I just want to praise Austin for the fact that he puts up with my chaos, but also he makes sure that there's all text on every single post that goes out because he's in charge of scheduling Twitter. So point of pride for me that he is so good about it. And I've, I've learned so much about the all text side and access, uh, accessibility side through Alexa. And that has paid its dividends far and wide. And I would highly recommend if anyone's looking to better their social media game, follow Alexa, take her pro tips and put them into play because it'll, it'll return really well. Yes. Alexa is the accessibility queen and I praise her daily for all of her contributions to our community. Um, so, okay. So I want to unpack this a little bit. So you experience this rapid growth. You are also have other jobs. How do you, uh, I guess you touched on this a little bit, Alexa, but like, how do you manage it all? Like, and if you have one tip for, um, you know, just knowing your own worth, reducing stress, reducing ban or adding bandwidth, what would that one tip be? Well, when we started out, I was just getting, you know, confessions left and right because it was this novelty. There wasn't an account that really existed like this specifically for social media. So I was just making the posts willy nilly, posting them whenever. And then uh, after I brought Austin on to kind of help me manage all this, cause I'm like, well, I want to do Twitter eventually. We'll probably do Facebook eventually just kind of cover the big three. We decided, okay, let's do, let's do three a day on each platform that that works. We'll stagger them. And then after a few weeks of that, I was like, let's just do one a day because we have a lot of content coming in and I think it'll just be easier from a scheduling standpoint. So we post once a day on each platform, they're staggered based on when they came in. Cause we obviously started Instagram. And then a few weeks later we started Twitter. And then a few weeks after that, we started Facebook. Um, and we only post Monday through Friday. We don't post on the weekends in solidarity with our colleagues and peers who shouldn't have to work on their days off. So we did that and that's really worked for us, but also just Austin and I are always communicating. We text all the time and we talk all the time. We did a Zoom chat last week to talk about this. So I feel like communication has been really big for us. Absolutely. Communication is key and having the passion to, to have the energy in order to do this, to allocate the free time that's really fulfilling makes it easier to do. It's, it's not something we think about doing or we make a chore out of. We just do it because we want to do it. And the growth we've seen it just keeps us rolling. Uh, and the community that we connect to is really our main fuel. Yeah. And we, we try to, connect, we try to schedule like a month at a time too, just so we're like, okay, we're good for the entire month. And once the last week rolls around, we're like, okay, gotta do next month. That's amazing. That's um, really smart. I, a month ahead is a dream state for me. That's, that's <laughs> yeah. awesome. Um, so I, you're starting to dive a little bit into the strategy and you're talking about submissions. So just so the audience knows what's, social media tea really is, is submissions from your community around their own experience with social media marketing um, and being social media marketers. And so Austin, I love how much life that gives you because it gives me so much life too. And it's one of the reasons I love being a social media manager for Sprout because I get to, yes, commiserate, but also um, really realize that we've got the strong community of marketers that are all focused on this common good and increasing accessibility in marketing, increasing diversity in marketing, increasing inclusion in marketing. So I think that there's 
so many crossovers, but I'm curious, you know, how do you collect those submissions and how do you decide which ones are going to go up or what's the strategy for social media teas content? So social media tea really is the greatest UGC user generated content project that I never thought I'd start. <laughs> um, but we take submissions through um, Instagram, through Facebook, through Twitter, and we also have an email. So if people want to email us, um, we're very clear on our website that you need to keep all, all of your content within your submission anonymous. So you can't name names, you can't name brands. Um, if I can make something even more vague, I will like taking out genders for um, people. And I just put them into this giant spreadsheet that Austin and I have as they come in. So I take down the submission, the data came in, and then I give it a number so that I keep them in order. And then there's columns for uh, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, as well as the emoji that they get assigned which is just random and whatever I feel like giving it at this point. Um, so we just do them in chronological order and that seems to work out just fine. Um, but yeah, Austin, do you want to talk about our strategy? Oh my God. Well, the best part about our strategy is that it's continually evolving and there is no yes. guardrails that we put up around ourselves. We always want to experiment or, you know, see this worked or this didn't let's try and make something better about it. Um, you can see our pinned tweet on our uh, uh, Twitter uh, for our Twitter strategy, uh, which is basically just to be free form and ad hoc in all regard. Um, and, you know, when we have the scheduled content, that's our content. But on the side, you know, Alexa and I will go on the accounts and just throw our thoughts into the void and hope they stick if they feel relevant. And a lot of times that comes through really well. Yes. Yeah. I love that about the account. I love that it's UGC, but it also has a voice. Um, and the account's pretty open and honest about being a social media account. And I just love that transparency. So I definitely see, see the strategy there. And I also think iteration is like the battery of a strong social media strategy. Like you should always be changing, always be owning up to things that you need to. Like, I, I just love that approach. So that's awesome. Um, I have to ask, you know, I'm curious, what is one of the most common submissions or grievances or I guess uh, opinions that are aired out? Um, we get a lot of people who just really share like the common things we hear as social media professionals. So one that we posted uh, last week on Instagram was just someone quoting someone that said something to them and it was just, Hey, can you just push this on social? And for whatever reason that really resonates with people because it's such a triggering phrase for us. Like, can you just put this on social? Like, uh, okay. Yeah. That's not the entirety of my job, yes. but thanks. So that one, um, the really humorous ones, there was one that talked about how this person, uh, would hide like weird phrases in her, um, her report every month to see if people actually caught on to it. And she's like, that's how I knew no one was reading my reports because no one ever said anything about the weird phrases she was just randomly dropping in there. So those are always interesting when, when social media professionals do something to kind of take back their power, people really relate to that. I know I relate to that really hardcore. <laughs> um, you know, that's absolutely why I love working in a social media organization. I tell people all the time, it's because people speak my language. Um, but, you know, I feel like the core of it is, and we hear this a lot from our community too, is like social media managers are at the nucleus of an organization. They know the customer the best. They're doing all the work. They're um, being strategic, iterating constantly, all of these different things, wearing a million different hats and nobody takes them seriously or no one cares to look at their reports or even ask for a report in the first place when that data could be so powerful. So um, I feel the plight of the social marketer and I think it is our time to shine. So I absolutely um, was not surprised that this account um, just totally took off. So my, my next question there is, and my last question is, Knowing everything you've learned and from all of the community over the past year and in the coming year, like what do business leaders need to know? How, what's going to get them 
to take social marketers more seriously, what would you like to impress upon organizations and businesses about their social marketing teams and the way that they approach and listen to social marketers? I'll go ahead and take that one to start. I mean, the, the thing is, is that uh, a sense of self-awareness for people and what they think they know about social versus the people who they work with, whose job it is to know social. A lot of times you'll get certain, you know, leaders or whomever that say, make this go viral without realizing the granular minutia of what it takes to get something from point A to point B. People at the top at leaders need to realize that social has a big and large place in their marketing, especially for community building as a whole. And it's also important that they have the trust in their social media managers to do the right thing, to handle it the right way, because that trust comes from so many days and months and years of doing this. That isn't just an overnight thing you can just turn on and off. It's not a knowledge thing you can just read into and think you know it because it's always evolving. And so for leaders, it really comes down to understanding what you do and don't know, but also trusting the person that you've appointed to know and manage social to actually give them the reign to do what they need to do with it. Yeah. And I, I think understanding not just, you know, brand leadership, but everyone out there who engages on social media, that the person behind an account is a human being. And we are experiencing so many different emotions and dealing with so many different situations every single day. And with this pandemic, a lot of us are burnt out creatively, emotionally. It's, it's very taxing our work. Um, the response that we get a lot with the T account when people find it the first time is, oh my gosh, this is so therapeutic or, oh my gosh, this is so cathartic to the point where Austin and I recently did a collaboration with our friend Ariel at Thrive Works. He's, he's part of that account. And we did some questions that were based around mental health and working in social media. And then Thrive Works, um, graciously had one of their therapists answer those questions from a social media standpoint. And so many people, when I posted it to Instagram, were just responding with, I needed this today. Like, thank you for doing this. I really needed this. So understanding that your social media manager is probably burnt out, is probably a little tired, needs less screen time and needs support, not only from the tools they use, but from emotional support. They need mental health days. So it's, it's not just playing around on Twitter all day. We, we manage a lot and it's different job to job. Preach all of that. I feel that so deeply. Um, I couldn't be more grateful that you two exist and I couldn't be more grateful that you two are part of this drug community and are running this account. Um, so thank you for doing this for all of us. I speak on behalf of all social media managers. Um, we needed you and thank you for chatting with me today. Um, that's all I got. Thanks for having us. This was wonderful. And obviously the T account is a Sprout user. So we love Sprout. <laughs> it makes it a lot easier when we're bulk uploading for a month. No kidding. We, we, this would not be uh, as seamless as it is without Sprout. So Sprout mm -hmm. is key to this and we're grateful to, to be, you know, running this and, you know, getting the message out there. And we're grateful for the interview today. Oh my gosh. Thank you. Thank you so much.